Um, good evening, everybody. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Boka Yen Yon Setan, um, Kuneka, Nunglena Bigade Len New, and be happy to see you again on the State of Affairs, um, the political show that brings in politicians, activists, and then uh, also broadcast social events and religious events uh, within the diaspora and the Gambia. Um, today, I'm going to um, be hosting um, some key personnel that, um, whose faces are very familiar on the social media and also who play uh, who are playing a very important role in the new Gambia and also in, in the old Gambia. And we welcome you on board and we say thank you for your time and thank you for watching. And I'm going to bring in our main guest today, who is Lamin Tamba, the APRC Dias Brother um, PRO. Um, today, our discussions will be focusing on politics and, of course, as we all know, it's the order of the day. And also, we'll be talking about some um, developing issues regarding the um, High Court appeal against the Janet Commission. And also, we make, if time permits us, we're going to look at the TRRC and the land disputes and also justice for the Haruna Jata, who was killed um, some time ago, compared with what we are seeing today, justice for um, all black people equally. And also, if time permits us, we're going to also look at the draft constitution and compare with the 1997 constitution. Also, I'll be having past time with Junior, who is more or less likely a constitutional expert who knows um, exactly what is happening and also have done a comparison between the two. Um, greetings to you, Ifinyasi, and greetings to everybody else who's listening. We are pleased and happy to have you here, as always we used to do. Um, I'm going to bring in Lamin. Mr. Tamba, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not bad, sir. And thank you for coming. And we appreciate your 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 um your acceptance for to be part of this state of affairs show. And um, just a brief introduction about who you are and in what capacity are you coming to talk today? Well, um, good afternoon, uh, viewers. First and foremost, good afternoon to you, Paos. Uh, and thank you very much to Voice Out Digital for giving me the platform to come and share my experience, my knowledge, my predictions of Gambian politics. My name is Lamin Tamba, born and bred Gambian, Funye. Um, living in the UK now. I am a supporter of the APRC, a member of the APRC, and I am APRC's mouthpiece out here in the diaspora. Um, the public relations officer of the APRC uh, in the diaspora, UK branch. So um, thank you very much. I've heard the topics we want to discuss. I think key amongst those topics is the Court of Appeals ruling in terms of the activities that followed the white paper of the government. And I'm more than happy to share what I know about the Court of Appeals ruling, what I know about the commission, and what my bone of contention has always been with this commission. In fact, when, I, when it came out and I looked at the composition of the commission, I adopted the commission of Fen Query. And that's the reason why I said that, because the commission had no truth in it from its composition from the very first day. The com uh, commission of Janet Commission was not set about finding the truth. Janet Commission was not set about being partial. Ghana Commission was only interested in going after one person and one person only and anyone else who's associated with that person that they didn't like. So I don't want to go deep into it. This is just an int introduction and I would like to go further in when we start the actual conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lavin. And this seems to be very interesting and we will see where at, by the end of the day today, we will see whether if we have successfully um, established these facts to support what you just said. Um, I'm yeah. going to be in Pasambu Junior. Yeah. Pa, can you see us? We can't see you. Yes. Hello, Pa, can you hear us? Pasambu Junior, are you on New Me Network or something? <laughs> <laughs> Pa, can you hear me? 
Your line is cracking really badly. I cannot, I can hear you. Just about. Uh, I think it's your internet. Do you wanna, let me see. There is not much I can do from my end, but um, Thank you. let me uh, do something. Is it any better now? Any better now? Park, can you hear us? Park, can you can you can you hear us, Park? Okay, we it looks like um, Pa is struggling, but uh, uh, it'd be very interesting to have you on board. But I will keep trying and then see. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Pa, can you can you hear us? It looks like I'm hearing my oh he's out again. Yeah, um I mean we're gonna uh, Mr. Ma, we're gonna go um straight in. In in what capacity you said you are the mouthpiece of the APRC in the diaspora? Uh, yeah. what does that mean? Uh, what would the layman understand from that in, in the professional world? In well in the, in, in the professional world, uh I am officially appointed as the uh spokesman or the public relations officer of the UK branch. Um, however, the APS is a well-coordinated party, very well disciplined. So although I'm the UK branch spokesman, I tend to speak on behalf of the party on many things outside the Gambia. Uh, and I've got, uh, um, we communicate regularly with the US branch and the EU branch. And now the APS is having an Arabia branch, which is almost done set uh, so i am officially uh appointed the public relations officer um what we call in short pro or in other p in other languages is the spokesman or the spokesperson uh so that is my official capacity so whatever we discuss today you are speaking officially on behalf of the aprc not what you yes. think Okay. Yeah, I okay. will be speaking on behalf of the UK branch by extension the APRC because we've had extensive consultations with the party okay. back home. So I will not be able to go into detail as to what APRC's press statement or press conference is going to be on Thursday, but I can give you insights into what the party is looking to do following the fallout from the appeals court uh, decision. Okay. Pastor Amo, can you hear us? Pa, can you hear me? Pa, can you hear me? Can you hear us, Pa? Pa, are you okay? Is he, is he on mute? Yeah, just about. Can yes. you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now, better. Now, yes. Yes. It's like you see from phony to the combos now. <laughs> <laughs> the line is really bad. I... No, it's the phony line. We know. We, we know. No, this is your way, hundred percent. Papa, I would just leave you to introduce yourself to the people uh, who are watching. We, we, by the way, we are broadcasting live on Facebook Live and also on YouTube, and people do see you, Pastor Ambu, writing and commenting, and and then at, at, at a very very high skill and professional level, especially when it comes to. Uh, I'm, I'm analyzing the Gambia constitution. You've been very instrumental in that. Um, and I think the last time you did work, you sent us an analysis of, I think, about 12 page about the compare and contrasting of the old and the new draft. So would you want to tell the people, um, just for a few brief minutes, who you are and perhaps what you do? He's gone again. 
Okay, let me. Uh... Ah, he needs to restart his phone, I think. You know, if he's using a phone, if it's a laptop, then he needs to come out of it and come back in. Okay, let me send him that so that he can. You want to start? Okay, we will we'll go with you, um, Lamin. We're gonna start here. I, I, we have seen recent recent um developments about the judicial system in the Gambia in between um the Jane, the multiple commissions, as I will call it. La, yeah. uh, if you just had the chance to speak, just say hi, and I will come back to you. But for now, okay, we have removed from this one, and this one is coming. So um, we, I, I want to um, have a general your your perception of a general overview of yeah. the current administration that we have from 2016 in terms of the judicial reform. Because I think that that is the that is the point where I'm going to focus more on. Yeah. And, and, and and because the order of the day, some are saying it's a revenge government and it's a win hunt government, given the fact that we have a TRLC and we have multiple commissions all targeting at one specific group of people allegedly. Yeah. Um, being, mm. being how so maybe we might graduate from saying the word allegedly, confirming yeah. that that is the truth. So um, yeah. just want to know your your general um uh, perception of 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 the judicial reform that is taking place now and how competent or incompetent um um that this administration if is is doing right now well um i wouldn't add uh, from a legal perspective so far there's no judicial reform in the gambia at all i mean the first step of a judicial review as far as we can see is a constitutional review commission uh, and that constitutional review commission should have been the first thing that the borough government should have done. The first and foremost act, if you're talking about judicial reform, there is a system that's working already in the Gambia, judiciary, legislature, the executive. Now, if you want to change the way government operates, and government is three arms, we have the executive, we have the judiciary, and then we have the legislature. If you want to change it, you're talking about reform, uh, yeah. in, uh, reform of the judiciary. Those three arms are very important. The most important of the two is parliament. And then the next one is court. Executive comes after that. Although we know in Gambia's context, the executive probably has more power now than any other arm of government under the 1997 constitution. The executive is top heavy. If you compare it with parliament and the courts, the executive has got a larger proportion of powers. So you want to come and change. You want to do judicial reform. It starts with the main law that governs public activities. And the main law that covers public activities in the Gambia is the constitution. The constitution that's valid now is the 1997 constitution. You cannot do anything else that falls outside of the 1997 constitution. So you cannot carry out meaningful reforms unless you go back to the 1997 constitution and look at what it says, what it does, what it recommends, what it bans before you start any sort of judicial reform. So now, borough government came in, the first mistakes they made, the first mistakes borough government made was swearing in a president on foreign land. Nobody until this day has shown us anywhere in our constitution that says a Gambian president can be sworn in on foreign land. Yeah, but it, 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 but it didn't say to, um, it didn't, the constitution did not give a specific location where, where, where we should swear a president, does it as well? Yeah, well, legally, if something, a constitution or a law is silent about something, it doesn't make it category clear, mm -hmm. you have to avoid it. That's the legal standpoint. You cannot exercise a power that you are not given. So because he hasn't given it doesn't mean you can do it all because the constitution doesn't say, it, let me do it anyway. No. In legality, if it's something is silent or something, it's best avoid it. You cannot do it and say, oh, because it's been omitted by the constitution. No. Or you find a way of legislating for it to happen. We had many ways 
of averting what happened by swearing in the president overseas. But let's skip that because that's happened. Barrow returned to the Gambia and started running the government. What did he do first? The first thing Barrow and his government did was to start dismissing people willy-nilly, left, right, and center. Okay? And then the Barrow government, the first thing they did was try to amend one section of the constitution or two or three, depending on what they needed. The first one they tried to do is amend the constitution so that old people can be appointed in borough government. People over the age of 65 could be appointed as vice presidents. That was the first thing they do. That was the beginning. Gambians should have woken up and thought, hang on, this government is here to serve itself. The constitution says the president and the vice president must not be over 65 years old. Why are they specifically interested in amending that clause just to suit one person? What sort of government is that? So first and foremost, they abandoned the reform agenda. What better government should have done? Appointed everyone who done everything within the constitution while they rushed through constitutional amendments. Most of the amendments in our constitution today can be amended by parliament. So what they could have done, the existing parliament before we had parliamentary election, could have amended laws, for instance, the fee you needed to pay to become a candidate in the National Assembly election. They rushed and amended that because it favored them. And they tried to amend the age restriction because it favored them and they did it the wrong way. Why then didn't they wait until elections were done and have a parliament that will amend all the sections of the constitution that the majority of the public wanted changed? You start with the basic law, the constitution first. Once you amended the constitution and you amended the immunity, uh, the uh, immunity clauses that are accorded to the junta and jamma. Once you amended those, then you can institute the commission of inquiry. You can institute the TRRC. You can institute many other things without offending the constitution, without overthrowing the constitution, abrogating it, contravening it. So what they did, they did put the cart before the horse. And we saw last week what happened. The cart crashed into a wall and the horse crashed into it. That's what happened. Barton Bidu is the cart and Barrow government is the horse. They just both crashed into each other. And now what we're talking about is a crash site. Uh, and at this crash site, how much damage has been done? Who's injured? Who's dead? Who's not dead? What can we recover from this? bad crash that the borough government just had at the appeals court. So now Barton Bidu who's supposed to investigate that crash is saying, oh, I'm going to appeal it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the horse and the cart back to where it started so that I can put the horse and the, uh, the horse in front of the cart. Yeah. So if you put in, how can you recover lost time? You've already done something. You've already crashed, but you're going to start the journey again so that you don't crash. This is what Barton Bidu is trying to do now. The appeals court said, hang on, you didn't do something properly. So whatever you've done up to that point is illegal. It's not done properly. So he's saying, I'm going to appeal it. How are you going to appeal something that says, you need to write in English, you wrote in Arabic, and you go back and say, no, the law that said I wrote in English is wrong. I'm going to go and appeal against it. What is he going to appeal against here? The court simply said, you didn't do it properly. This is the way you should have done it. And he says, no, I'm going to appeal that. Because why? He's got power. He can tell the courts what to do. Well, hang on. The court and parliament can't be told what to do by the executive. So Barton Bidu, as far as I'm concerned, is fighting a losing battle. The legal reforms, reforms of the judiciary should have started with our constitution first. CRC should have come first, amend the constitution, put it in a referendum, or amend clauses that didn't need a referendum, let's operate legally first, and then go into Jana Commission and TRRC. So we've done the cart before the horse, and we crashed, and it's no surprise. Thank you. Paos, you're mute. Pastor, pa can you hear us now? Yeah. Aha. Good. Sorry, I'll ask this question. I'll come back to you. I will fulfill the line. 
pa, um, yeah. the section section two hundred of the constitution, the nineteen ninety seven. It, it it also allows any government or with, who's acting within that constitution to institute a council of inquiry. So um, um, where is the argument based in, in regards to um, having a commission before making a, before instituting um, a reform? So where do we draw the line here? Because the commissions, first they are in line with the constitution. What is the problem? Okay, all uh, right, okay. I think um, we need sorry, to unpack sorry. a few things. Pa, pa, I forgot to introduce you, and I wanted to ask you to introduce yourself and put a no, but if you want, we can just, you can quickly bust that, then we go on. And, and you can, or, you, or, you can I, just I, intro, I, that's fine. Yes, <laughs> that's fine, then we move on then. We move on. Okay, yes, um, w w what I was going to um, say was, I think um, we need to um, unpack a few things here. Uh, because what we need to look at, I was following what Lamin Tamba was saying, but I think there has been some um, there has been some inaccuracies when it comes to the way that the the court judgment was was reported. Because I know most of the newspapers were reporting that um, the Janet Commission cannot be implemented, or basically what they were saying was the Janet Commission is useless. I don't think that's what the judgment said. So the headline. No. So so we are now. So the media misrepresented the verdict of the appeal court? Maybe, maybe I would not call it a misrepresentation. I would call it a misre misreporting. Maybe it was misreported. I don't think it was done intentionally. Uh, it, it was a misreporting. But basically what the courts have said, the courts have not um, faulted the commission or the substance of the recommendations. What the courts have faulted is the manner in which the recommendations were implemented by the executive. Basically, what the court is saying is, yes, the executive uh, followed the, the constitution by instituting, instituting the Janet Commission. That's fine. Mm. But once the recommendations were made by the Janet Commission to the executive, the executive cannot rely on those recommendations and enforce those recommendations as if the executive our judges and the recommendation from the commission was a court order which was as good as a court judgment. So basically what the court was saying was, yes, you had, you had this recommendation, but you cannot just implement or enforce these recommendations without judicial oversight. So what the executive really should, should have done was they should have gone to court and sought either a court order or or, or apply for some sort of um, judicial mechanism that they could use to institute the um, the recommendations of the of the commission. But they cannot just what they cannot do is just pretend as if they are judges and dish out punishments on the basis of the recommendations that they got from the Janet Commission. Can, can I can I can I can I can I be correct in saying that what did mm -hmm. what the cabinet tried to do? was not a clear justification of his separation of power because cabinet wanted to assume the position of, of a judiciary um to impose or to impose those, those recommendations as if it is it, itself but again the commission if that is the case the commission was not a judiciary body it was not a court session where where a verdict was been given and and we expect somebody else to to to, to act on that verdict but the commission is not a is it a judiciary settings or does it fall within the jurisdiction of the judiciary or the cabinet? Okay, uh, right. I I I I know um, um, Lamin Tamba has given a lot of fault to to the government and Barton Biru, But let's be let's be fair. Barton Biru was following um, a precedent and a law that was created by APRC. Because APRC, APRC passed the Assets and Properties Recoveries Act. And based on that, legis uh, that uh, primary legislation, when JAME came in 1994, JAME passed this legislation. And it was this legislation that JAME used to, um, to forfeit and sell the assets of uh, people that were that were adversely mentioned in the um, in the Agali in was Alkali or Agali Commission. Commission Algali, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So Jame used the same provision or the same legal instrument 
that Bartembe was trying to use on on Jame on this occasion. But the difference, of, of course, is Bartembe was faced with a completely different political reality with an independent judiciary, and Jame obviously didn't have that. So obviously, we we can blame the government for uh, uh, for for so many things, of course. But I think with this one, I think we have to. Um, we have to cut them some slack because, to be honest, Lamin Tamba, I think um, I think APRC have been complicit in their own in their own victimization because it was the law that you passed that Barton Bay used. So you can't really fault him without faulting yourselves. Okay, um, Lamin, yeah. I'm going to come to you. This might be very interesting because uh, it looks like at some point we're going to have pro yeah. and cons and and listeners. Yeah. Um, Please bear with us here. This is not going to be any kind of personal attack. We're trying to. No, get... no, no, no. I'm happy. I'm happy to come and count. No, about I, someone. I don't have to use with you too. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm giving to the people who are watching so they can exercise some yeah. kind of respect and also understanding that what we are discussing here is for the benefit of us young people. We are trying to educate yeah. ourselves and we are trying to see through a solution for Gambia. Yeah. One of the two yeah. governments is making a mistake. That is not the fault of either, because every government yeah. I would imagine was was right in your sense in, in that right situation that you've put yourself in, and I think that's what yeah. Pastor is trying to bring in. But again, yeah. I mean, of course, um, you you pretty much you fault the government for not doing the judicial reforms that were needed. Yeah. Hence, the yeah. comments, um, we are we more or less having a government that is relying on appealing. Um, yeah. And as by the looks of it, now um, yeah. far just come from the north direction, saying this government is beating you in your own game, pretty much our yeah. such way. So can we yeah. can we accept that and give credit to where credit is due, saying that yes, we faulted it; it's our fault. But is it that the way you do it is wrong, or? Because the way you apply the law is wrong, or it's not that you know where is the where do we draw the battle line here? Okay, Paos. Um, first and foremost, you remember what I said at the beginning. So forget pa, what pa, tam, uh, pa Sambu said in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> let's go, let's go back. Let's go back to where I said reforms. Reforms should have come in before the January Commission and the TRRC were set up. So so so. Let me I'll come to pass Sambu in a minute. Okay, I'll let me to in a minute. I mean, yeah. What reforms are we talking about here? This is this is this is this is your government. For, for example, this is, I would just explain me to to, to 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 just use that word. Your government. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who today we are saying they get yeah. better laws than these people, and now yeah. are you justifying that there was the need for a reform, indicating that what you had previously was not fit? For every government yeah now not fit and reforms are two different things okay 1997 constitution is fitter than the draft that we have today i can tell you that 100 percent when it comes to being categorically clear with gambian people hmm. the 1997 constitution had some things that needed reform and believe me or not even if you pass the draft that we have today with some people call progressive when it's not progressive 10 15 years down the line we're going to need we're going to need to reform again that same draft constitution if it ever passes so forget what happens there is no single piece of legislation no single piece of government that will operate for five years one term without needing changes let alone a government that's been there for 20 years 22 years that's all it's going to need need to be a review of some of these constitutional provisions. Now, 1994 and 2020 are completely different generations in terms of Gambia. Hmm. All right, the realities in 1994 and the realities in 2020 are completely different. Now, what Pa Sambu is, pa, pa Sambu is doing, he's saying blame the APRC for the bad laws. And that's one superior, uh, inferior piece of legislation, just one that Barton Bidu may, may have uh, invoked to be able to sell Jamaica's properties. That's the papra. He's saying the APRC, AFPRC actually, not APRC, that's AFPRC government passed that in order to deal with the Algali Commission that made recommendations and they needed to dispose of some of the assets from the PPP government. 
Now, I cannot give credit for ignorance. If Barton Bill comes in and he knows TAPRA is, a, is an inferior piece of legislation. Every legislation is good. It's like the Public Order Act is good up to the point where it clashes with the Constitution and then it becomes bad. Are you with me? The PAPRA, the Public Order Act, they're all good pieces of legislation as long as they don't clash with the Constitution. And what the appeals court said, it's got nothing to do with the PAPRA legislation. It's got nothing to do with, oh, Bartambido being ignorant. It's got to do with telling Bartambido the Jana Commission recommended something. The government picked what they wanted out of those recommendations and came up with their white paper. Once that white paper has been formulated and communicated, the government should then go back to the court and follow due process and have this authority from the court to start selling the stuff, which is what the government didn't do. So the government recommended something. A white paper is government opinion. It's not a court order. So the government couldn't use the white paper and then start selling assets belonging to Jame and his associates. They should have gone back to the court again and sought the court's authority before they disposed of the items. So that simply means, in a layman's terms, what the government did was illegal. The government bestowed on themselves powers that they didn't have. So if I took powers, you owed Pasambu money, and then somebody gave you the opinion that you owed Pasambu money, and they went and took your phone and sold it without going through courts to get a court order to say, okay, you owe Pasambu 500 pounds or 500 dollars, and your phone cost 500 dollars. Somebody went and sold it without the court ordering it. Even though we know, or we might have guessed, or because it's a white paper is an opinion, the other commission's recommendations are the same. They're not court orders. So you needed to go back to the court to get the order and then start selling off the stock. So if I sold your phone to pay per, uh, per sample without getting a court order, I've done an illegal act. I've sold your phone illegally. That's the same way as are stealing stuff and passing it to somebody and selling it to somebody because the stuff doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Paos. You didn't have an order to sell Paos's phone to pay Paasambu. So title of that phone didn't pass from you to Paasambu. It's illegal. You see, it takes us back to reforms again, Paos. The first thing this government should have done is reform the 1997 constitution in areas that they thought were wrong. If they did that, Paos, they wouldn't be having the same problems. But that Papra could have been repealed. Listen, that Papra could have been repealed. Pasambu himself knows categorically clear, very well, that section 69 of the 1997 Constitution and section 232.13.4 of the 1997 Constitution clearly says that Jamme should not be investigated for acts or omissions <laughs> uh, committed while he was in office. He knows. All right. And then the same, the same clause, uh, clause or a different paragraph said the junta between 1994 and 1996 shouldn't be investigated at all by any commission. So first and foremost, the Janda Commission has no legal foundation. They can investigate everyone. They can investigate Ahmadu Samba. They can investigate Basi, Karafi, and other people. But they had no authority to investigate the junta, and they had no authority to investigate Jamme until that section 69 or section 232 have been lifted by parliament. They didn't do that. They just jumped and instituted these commissions. Those commissions are inferior to the, uh, to the 1997 constitution. They had no right to investigate the junta and they had no right to investigate Jamme. They could investigate all other Jamme associates from 1996 to 2017 when he left, but not Jamme himself. Even if they investigated him, they couldn't have taken any legal action against Jame. Yeah, but cast in stone. But but Lamin, knows that. Yeah. Uh, as, as far as section three two is concerned, if you, for yeah. example, investigate Paos and as an accomplice yeah. of Jame, and and and, yeah. then, and then you can't eventually prosecute Paos because of you may wanna hear from from what partly was part of that yeah Jame or that 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 junta, and then yeah. where 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 is justice then? Because yeah, I, precisely. I, 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 not, so, not, so not, now, yeah, so now, exactly. 
So if you investigated Basi, or you investigated Njoguba, or you investigated Sabali, or hmm. investigated Ami Ben Suda, Jame will figure in, will come into the picture. Yes. Okay? You cannot avoid that. Yes. Eventually, or by extension, or what they call collateral, Jame's name will pop up all the time. <laughs> what you cannot do after that investigation is institute legal proceedings against Jame. You cannot. That's what yep. it means. But to talk on the Gambian people's level, some of the Gambian people who don't understand the legalities, you just have to talk about investigation. So they can investigate Jame because eventually Jame will figure in most of those inve investigations anyway. Just like Ami Ben Suda was figuring heavily in those investigations. But what you cannot do after that is institute legal proceedings against Jame because of those two sections. So what they should have done is dealt with those sections and watered them down. I know Barrow would have refused it because those same sections are today protecting Barrow himself. So Barrow is not going to want them to water those ones down. And yeah. this is the implication. This is why I think the draft constitution is going to fail. Because the same laws that are protecting Jame today, that Barton Bilo and his government are trying to contravene, are the same laws that are protecting Barrow. And some of those clauses, believe it or not, Paos, some of those immunity clauses were in the 1970 constitution. They're not new. The Public Order Act was there before Jame. Some of these things in the 1997 constitution were carried over from 1970. And the draft has the same. Although the draft has left a lot of room to be able to prosecute the sitting president or an ex-president. You understand? So we should have reformed the constitution first and then brought out all these commissions. So the first thing that should have been set up was the CRC. Change it, get 75% of vote for the new draft, and then you can set up the commissions. What they did, they were hungry, they were angry, they seized and sold Jammes first properties and APRC, even before the commission uh, conducted their first sitting. Okay? So now they sold stuff. The court said, you didn't have any right to sell those things. You sold them improperly. So what? You sold things illegally. What does that mean in street language? That means okay. you stole property. You didn't sell it properly. You didn't sell it properly. Go and get it and bring it back and do it properly. Okay, we, Lavin, we, I'm going to stop you there. We're going to come to it um, because I, I have some um, um, con conflicting um, argument which I'm going to put to you as far as Section yeah. 200 is concerned and, 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 yeah. and their mandate to execute. Uh, but yeah. uh, pa, uh, you've heard what Lavin is saying here now. We are now yeah. to um, uh, now the argument here is. The game was right, but it also favors the existing government. I think that that's where he ended up with. But um, as we have a constitution, 997, that, 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 that mm -hmm. allows a president to, to institute a commission of inquiry to investigate public officers and, and also civil servants, alcohol, including um, all people who have been held public office. But what then follows next, it did not say um, that whatever fines or recommendations that should follow should be a matter of the judiciary because the, 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 the actions to be taken after would not be based on a judicial ground. For example, it's now after what Sabra is doing, going to the High Court of Appeal to, 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 to see where there is violation of human rights, not to contest into any public office. So what is, what is the underlying theory behind the establishment of the, of the commission? Who will it fear or who will it speak to after the, the cabinet or the judiciary? Yeah, it, it, it all boils down to the issue of separation of powers because the constitution gives um, the president to institute um, a, or to um, begin uh, or to initiate um, commissions of inquiries on any public matter. Hmm. But um, the bottom line is whatever outcome that commission of inquiry. Um, ended up submitting to the president. The, um, as a result of the existence of the principle of separation of powers, the executive cannot institute those any recommendation from any commission unless and until they do it through a court. So it, it's, it all boils down to the issue of separation, separation of powers. So there was nothing wrong with them instituting the, um, the commissions at all. But the difficulty that this government had was they inherited a very bad system. And I know Lamin Tamba would not admit this, but, but, but that's the reality. They, they, they inherited a very bad system. 
because what uh, what the previous government did was we had the constitution but then what they did was they brought in this um, this APRA, which, which is the Assets and, and Properties Recovery Act, 1994. That was what JAME introduced. And when JAME introduced it, that piece of legislation was supposed to be the bridge between the commissions and enforcement. So basically, the previous government relied on this piece of legislation to enforce recommendations from commissions of inquiries without them having to do it through the courts. So every single um, commissions of inquiry recommendation that the previous government have um, instituted was done unlawfully. So I think Lamin Tamba just needs, needs to admit that. Yes, but no. I am not I am not here to defend the, the action of the government, trust me. Yeah. Because I think if, if, if anyone has been following the things that I have been saying on, on, on this issue, they'll know that I am not a big fan of of the government, especially how they handle things and how they breach the the, the constitution. They don't personally. I don't think the government has any interest whatsoever in doing anything properly. They don't. Whenever they, whenever they feel that they have an opportunity to get away with something, they'll go for it, which I think is a very bad way of conducting um, conducting public governance. But on this specific issue, I know Lamin Tamba is talking about um, has mentioned Section sixty nine and another. Um, I think it's uh, section 232 as being provisions which means that JAMES affairs cannot be looked into. Yes, he's correct in that. But then what we need to outline very clearly, Lamin Tamba, is the judgment has not gone into that. The judgment did not examine the legality yeah. or otherwise of the yeah. commission. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what the judgment was looking at was the enforcement, the un enforcement yeah. of the recommendations of the commission by the government. So yeah. for now, for now, whether or not Jami is, uh, Jami is um, whether or not the commission was right into look, um, um, whether, whether or not the commission was lawful, was acting lawfully in looking into the affairs of Yaya Jami or not, I think that is still a big question mark, which I think the courts need to um, need to answer at some point. Yeah. But for now, we can we can say for certain that the way that the government went about implementing the recommendations of the commission was unlawful and the justice minister wants to appeal it i, I am not sure what what exactly he i think appeal. i think we, we have it here it's very clear um this is here yeah and yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i saw that this was done by yourself um pa um yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and this was where i want us to end but let me um let me just get this thing clear so people can see uh get the burner off yes well, yes, I okay. I think now it's clear now. So, um, as far as this thing is concerned, um, the government here admit defeat, but also did conduct themselves in some of the paragraphs. Yeah, pa, was, I, are you talking to me or Pa Sambo? No, the, the, this was Pa's doing. I think Pa, you did this. Yes, the, um, yes, yes. Basically, when I when I read through when I read through the government press release. <laughs> It was because every paragraph was contradicting the other. It, 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 yes, it's just, exactly. it's just a, it's, it, it was just a piece of it was just a piece of comedy, to be honest. I think <laughs> I'm not sure who it was that that wrote this, but I think they didn't do any favors for themselves, nor yeah. the nor the government, because it was it was contradictory. Because what yeah. they are saying is, what they are saying is because uh, what I found there was one um, there was actually two things which I found really really. Um, really interesting when they say that the court has departed from a long-standing principle i am not sure what the, the court have not departed from any principle the principle of separation of powers is very clear I, I, executive, I think, yeah. but i think yeah what, what they're trying to do was we have emerged from the days of yeah and the way he does things by himself i think if i if i'm right here that's why mm -hmm. it says yeah in departure from a long established practice in this jurisdiction i think they they, they they're still referring to the game that they are playing on the, 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 the same constitution and the same law and the same act that Jamie used in the Al Qaeda Commission. That's what they that's what that's what they're doing now. That's what they're conducting themselves here. I think. Yes, because for some reason, for some reason, it is still their position that they can still rely on this APRA uh, um, primary legislation to enforce the recommendations of the commission, which is wrong. 
what the court actually said was true because because just to borrow a phrase from the from the brexit campaign the courts have taken back control that's it there's yeah. no way that the judges are going to give them there is no way that the supreme court is going to rule to say that yes the executive has jurisdiction or the executive has the powers to enforce the recommendation of a commission there's no way the, the, yeah. the, the courts are going to give back that power no the courts want that power back it yeah. is theirs and they're taking it back yeah there's no way they're going to give it back so i'm not yeah. sure what exactly the government wishes to appeal it's just going to be a waste of time and a waste of money yeah yeah, but, 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 uh, yeah, Larry, yeah, uh, uh, yeah i pass them but let them appeal because what i'm trying to get the government to fall into right now is to fall into the to push the appeals court because then it's going to go to the supreme court and the supreme court <coughs> might receive a question from someone about jurisdiction that's what i'm praying for i'm praying for somebody to trigger the jurisdiction issue of the Janet commission itself and then instead of falling gently they have fallen so bad they will never recover from it as it stands they've actually fallen so bad they're not going to recover it because i don't know what bad somebody is going to do about some of the assets that he's already disposed of first he didn't advertise them secondly we don't know who bought them whether those are competitive market prices we don't know but i'm hoping he will stupidly go to the uh, supreme appeals court or supreme court and say hang on the courts have told me how to do something i think the courts are wrong to tell me how to do stuff i mean what kind of justice minister is would think that anyway the court said, said to you clearly this is how you were supposed to do something you didn't do it therefore what you've done is illegal and then you go back to the same courts and say hang on courts the process you told me i should follow is wrong is that why he's going to appeal you're going to go and tell the courts that the court's job or the uh, explanation interpretation of the law that the court has done to you so that section 200 of the constitution powers it sets out what a commission must do yeah. from the beginning to the end yeah and that's what the courts told batambidu so Badambidu has done the beginning to 75% of it. The 25%, which is the most crucial 25%, he failed to do that. You understand? So the court said, hang on, before you've done the final hurdle, you should have come to us, get our blessings before you sold these items. And if yeah, you did I, that, maybe you would not be in the mess he's at because the court will say, all these assets need to be advertised. They have to be a competitive market value. Most of them should have been out for um, uh, auction bid open. You need to advertise it. But because they didn't do that, they did all the wrong things. They shared it amongst themselves, sold it amongst themselves because the court was not there to give them that oversight. So they did what they wanted anyway. And now it's like, oh, yeah, we it's happened. Oh, my God, we're in serious trouble now. What do we do? Where are Jamie's properties? Where are his cattle? So all those people who ate the cattle will go and find all the fullers and serials who swallowed that cattle, yeah. will go and find it and bring it back. This is where we are now, unfortunately. Yeah, and, 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 and Pa, I'm going to come to you on this one. Um, where does this leave Jame and the government? Would, would you foresee a compromising situation between the government and the Jame? Hence, um, because like, 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 like Tam, uh, um, Levin has just mentioned, um, now how would I explain the previous asset that they have sold because of there have never been any pronouncement from the court as far as we know as the public the court giving an order yes go ahead and sell now would would you foresee any kind of compromising situation between jami and the um and 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 and, and the government no um well i am not sure because with this government you can never tell because i think uh, we can make a list of all the mistakes that we can expect them to make between now and the end of uh, the end of their time in office and i think we can we can guarantee ourselves that they'll make they'll tick every single box but um but i do not think the game is over yet for for the government because because don't forget the findings of the commission are still solid the, the court has not really faulted those what i was expecting the government to do following this judgment was for the government to um, pursue a course of action which would be along the lines of uh, seeking a court order from the courts in order for them to carry on enforcing the, the findings of the commission. 
but unfortunately they've gone down the route of appealing it which i don't think is gonna bear any fruit so no the game is not yet over for the government so james um, james has not really escaped nor has uh, has anybody else who has been adversely mentioned in in the recommendations that the that the Janet Commission gave the um, gave the government. So so I think the the, the game is still on. For yeah, the but they can still, they can still pursue it. But we have seen we have seen um, Sabali making um, a court appeal against 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 a report. His name mentioned um, I think uh, well he's making a um, high court appeal against the Janet Commission report on him. And and if we are seeing here that nothing has started, um, and we are not yet at the level where those things have started to be enforced. So is Sabali also pulling the bull by the tail? I am not. I am not sure exactly what the um, what the objective of Sabali's court challenge is. I am not. I, I, I have, it's, it's not something that I have looked into, to be honest. Um, but what I can tell you now is that um, the recommendations of the commission and the findings of the commission and the substance that was given to the executive by the Janet Commission mm. are all intact and are all solid and good the court has not faulted any of it okay the only thing that the court has faulted is, is the manner perfect? in which the government is the manner in which the government sought to enforce these recommendations ah so because the recommendations are still good and and uh, well so far they are so what the government can do the government can go back to the courts to seek to see a court order to enforce the recommendations. The enforcement was faulty, but the recommendations are still good. So the government can always go back to the courts to get a court order to enforce them. So technically you are saying the game hasn't begun yet. The government can still go back and now follow due process, which will in effect um, be accepted by the court. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, but, 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 but when the sales of JAMA assets was being conducted, would you accept or would you agree that that was done outside the law um, that would not be um that, that would not be part of well when the court when high court says yes the yes would not be backdated because already That's... they have they have already got i think 50 million what what 50 million dollars is from the sales of their property so if, if government should go to court tomorrow um which i clearly think they would not do but that would be showing clearly that yes we made a mistake we're going back to do but what happened to what what they have sold so far yes i think um the government have got themselves into a very big mess so with regards to those sales i cannot see any of them having been done within the law so no because obviously they didn't have um it, it wasn't something that belonged to them no and it wasn't something that um that they sold or that or or, or 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 it wasn't assets that they took possession of based on um a court order or any judicial authority whatsoever basically they they, they decided by themselves that they yeah. help themselves to, to the assets i and have they yeah exactly yeah somebody sent me a message here i'm going to on whatsapp he said um the reason um the reason um has the reason it has not been faulted yet is simply because the court have yeah. not put at the legality of the finding yeah. of the commission yet. This has not been tested by any court. But if yeah. they if they were to do so, it is most likely to be declared unconstitutional. Yeah, that's true. Pastor Mbou and I agree on that. Pastor Mbou, you, that's, uh, that's still that's still an open question. <laughs> it's yeah. an opinion It's an open now. question. It's, it's, a, an, it's opinion. an open question, Pastor It's an open question, but we can help the viewers and say what Section 69 said, what Section mm -hmm. 232, 13, 4 said. You and I know, in simple layman's language, it did say you cannot take legal action against Jammer for what he did when he was in office. That's what it says in simple language. Yeah? When it goes to Supreme Court, it might be a different ball game. Like they always say, any contender can be a winner on the day. But in black and white, Section 69 and Section 232 categorically state mm -hmm. that the junta between 1994 and 1996 should not be subject to any commission or any legal proceedings. And after 1996, it says the president of the Gambia should not be subject to any commission or any legal proceedings. 
the same powers that Barrow is clothed himself in today. Those are the same powers. Again, the, the blame that you're putting on the APRC government and the 1997 constitution, the same constitution that brought about these commissions. But the commissions, section 200, says how they should be run. The government decided we're going to do it up to 75% and then veer off. So we both agree that that has not been challenged yet. Jurisdiction, which is the legality of the Jane Commission and the TRC, has not been challenged yet. But when they get challenged, we might end up having every Jamne asset or anything else returned to him because it simply states that Jamne should not be subject to any of these commissions or legal proceedings. And that's what members of the public want to hear. That that's what it says in simple language. But then when somebody needs to challenge it at the Supreme Court first, and then the Supreme Court will rule it. The problem with the Gambia is we don't have a lot of case law in terms of constitutionality. A lot of constitutional provisions have not been challenged in the past. So we're recently seeing a lot of challenges. There were challenges under Jammeh and he lost some of them. So even though you would like to blame the APRC government for not having an independent judiciary, Jammeh has actually lost landmark rulings in the past. It's not the first, it's not one, it's not two, it's not three. In fact, after the student demonstrations of 2000, the uh, Jammeh government did try to emphasize on their immunity clauses even more, and they failed because the UDP then challenged it and they failed to amend those uh, immunity clauses. But, so but let me, we can, uh, we, we can, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm gonna stop you there. In the, yeah. in the absence of any form of challenge, yeah, does one just willingly would jeopardize the principles of democracy and rule of law? The fact that there, are, we, we, yes, there was no challenge, but yeah, where when there is no challenge, does that mean we have to bend the rule of law and democracy? Are you trying to, are you trying to nicely quote that yeah. that, that 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 we we, we had been challenged and we lost? So we no, it's not our no. fault. A challenge is fine. Uh, mm. Pao's government is public business, a mm. public entity. A challenge is fine. If the constitution of 1997 didn't put section 69 there, and it didn't put section 232 there, yeah. the challenges would have been legal, no doubt. Yeah, you right. Jammeh for all the allegations, it's fine, no, nothing wrong with that. But first, we need to overcome these sections. You cannot then jump and say, okay, even though it says we cannot investigate Jammeh, we're going to investigate him anyway, which is what Bartam Bidou and his people are doing. I, I'm, I am in favor of justice. If somebody's done something deliberately out of their own official capacity, and you can prove that they were the principal actors or they aided and abetted, and you want to take them to court, fine. But the PPP benefited from those immunity clauses. APRC benefited from that. Well, before APRC was AFPRC. Barrow is benefiting from that. And the draft constitution has got the same kind of immunity clause for the serving president. Yeah, but but, but it's, Lamin, same, it's just Lamin, yeah. this benefit are they in yeah. public interest with as a result yes. with with with, so, with 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 yeah. go to section two hundred. Yeah, they put them there for a reason. Even the United States, the United Kingdom, the cradles of democracy, the beacons so, of democracy have got some of these clauses where you cannot take a sitting prime minister to court or president to court, or you can, you can but not because of something that their employees did. If we had strong recording, like on audio or something, like Trump has said, we just grabbed them by the pussy, or, or Tony Blair had done something, and you want to take that to court, that's different. You understand? So if you caught something that was, you think is strong evidence for you to prosecute a sitting president or a past president, it's up to you. You can try it. But then you know that sitting presidents a lot of things happen under them we cannot be dragging them to court every single time for every frivolous thing we will never do anything so you have to give them some sort of protection you cannot just jump up and say the president no. told me to go and slap somebody <clears throat> you understand there is called dero derogation Passable, you know derogation very well a president cannot run everything by himself can't do everything by himself 
Otherwise, we'll sue them every single day. I'll be suing Barrow every single day if that was the case. You have to give them some level of protection, but you cannot give them total impunity. That's the, that, that's the crux of the matter. Total impunity, which is in the 1997 Constitution, and it's in the draft constitution to a certain extent. That's what we don't want. But it's been there since 1970. If we want to change it, we change it now. If we don't change it now, it will continue. Thank okay. You. But, but are you, I think I'm, I'm sure you heard what Lavin is saying. And, and my, my, my reminder here is, I've, I've got a section, but any, anything, what, what leads to the disqualification of the presidency, and with one of them is anything that brings dispute to his, to his office. I think I think um, that might contradict Section 62 of the Constitution uh, because you give somebody an immunity and also anything he or she does and or which, which brings a dispute to, to, to his or her office or presidency, you can't you can't again prosecute. So um, what do you have to say um, as far as um, what Lamin human point is? I'm sure Lamin, you agree with me that yeah. APRC what they did might be wrong. But as far yeah. as it is concerned, you cannot get us. Is that what you say? Yeah, okay. True, true. I yeah. mean, oh. is, look, it's, let's let's say the APRC is the um, example here. Okay. There's a lot of wrong that's happened, and I've said that on my Facebook wall many times. Yeah. Yeah. I said that on Facebook. A lot of things have gone wrong. Mm. The same thing happened in the government before that, and this government that's doing now, every move they make is a mistake. Okay. You understand? So now, fine. You want to prosecute? people in the APRC, go ahead and do it. You want to prosecute PPP? Go ahead and do it. You want to prosecute Bartambidu tomorrow? You drag him. By the way, Bartambidu right now can be taken to court. Barrow can't. Yeah? According to the 1997 Constitution, you can't drag Barrow to court. But you can drag Bartambidu to court. You well, understand? Uh, price of okay. 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 Well, let's hear from, from, from Paul. Paul, what is your argument point here? Yes, I think um, yes. We, we, we we've been making lots of references to Section sixty nine, but let's let, let's just try and help the listeners understand okay. what Section sixty nine says. Basically, what Section sixty nine says is that um, whilst a sitting president is in office, they mm. cannot be prosecuted for anything, any civil or criminal matter, yeah. in line, which was done in line with their official duties. Yes, and once they leave office, this immunity carries on. But it's not an absolute immunity. There are yeah. ways to um, there are ways to revoke the immunity. Yeah, but and, what, and what the provision says is that the, the, the basically the executive has to take a motion to parliament, and as long as a motion to to to, to revoke the, the immunity, and as long as parliament votes in favor of the motion by a two thirds majority, yeah. then the, the immunity is revoked, revoked. Which which is still why I cannot understand why this government have not done that precisely because had they done that had they done that they would be in a much better position now to do like one of your yes like that whatsapp message said yes the jurisdiction has the jurisdiction of the jane commission over jame has not yet been challenged the key yeah. word is yet not yet yes so that that may come later yeah and when that comes then i think it's going to be a very interesting question for the um for the uh, for this uh the court of appeal and the supreme court so yeah. so what, what then my, my also concern as far as that keyword yet is concerned which mm -hmm. i don't yeah. think government would want to hear that yet is what they have done prior to getting uh, exhausting that yet or turning that yet yeah. in, 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 into the present tense then yeah okay, so, from, from, from my understanding from from my understanding and this is just a guess from me Okay. What I think, um, because the wording of Section 69 um, is not very clear, I think it's something that the courts would need to uh, would need to interpret. Yeah. Because what it's the word it the, the word it, it uses is proceedings. No, no proceedings can be can be can, can be taken against the sitting president. I think you can. Yes, it's Section 69. I think you need to come back down. Section come back 69. Down. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can see it says proceedings, no civil or criminal proceedings. Yeah. So now the question is: Is uh, was the Janet um, does the Janet Commission fit in with with this definition? Does the, does it, can we classify the Janet Commission as a proceeding, 
or was it not not a proceeding? If, say, for instance, the Supreme Court or the or the courts decide that the Janet Commission was a proceeding, then clearly they would be found to not have jurisdiction over Janet. But if yeah. at all the ruling is or, or the finding of the court is that the Janet Commission was not a proceeding, then I think the government would be in a very good position to carry on. But before they can seek any judicial oversight from the courts to enforce the recommendations of the commission, they would have to go through the steps of, I think, is subsection three to basically revoke the immunity before they can before they can proceed. Absolutely. So, but again, now we still that... we still have a very big question mark about jurisdiction. Okay, look, look at here. Um, no court may entertain any action against him or her in a civil proceeding. But, 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 pa, um, will be what would we use to, to, to define a Janet Commission except for it being, I'm sure, for one, it's not a legal proceeding. Hence, if it works, then there's no need for the government to go back to court and seek for a an action to be taken. Then, then it's not a civil, it, it's not a, um, uh, it's not a legal proceeding, then. Yeah, because the the difficulty is, which is why I say the wording is very clear. It didn't say legal proceeding; it said proceeding. That's all he said. I think uh -huh. you can scroll, scroll back. You can scroll back up. Let's have a look, just to confirm. Yes, it just says civil or criminal proceedings. It didn't say legal yeah. proceedings. That's that's the problem. So yeah, but a proceeding, even even and even a mere police investigation. Let's say even a mere investigation yeah, can be because. It's a proceeding. To, uh, a proceeding can be an inquiry. It can be an inquisition. It can be anything, you know, because it's it's a very it's a very broad term, and yeah. that is the difficulty. It it can mean so many things other than just court action. Yeah, but if the action of the proceeding is in line or prescribed in the constitution, it becomes a legal matter. Then, not 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 necessarily. Not so necessarily. Is, is the Janet Commission legal then? Okay, the, the, okay, the, there are two things. The Janet, whether the Janet Commission is a proceeding or not a proceeding for the purposes of Section 69, mm -hmm. that is a separate matter. But whether the Janet, Janet Commission was legally constituted and legally pursued, I think that that's very certain because the, the president has the powers to, to institute a commission okay. and the president relies on those powers. I have yeah. a comment so, here. Okay, let me come in after having this yeah, question. So, the, the legality of the Janet Commission is not in question because Parliament has passed the Act. Yeah. So what, okay. what it cannot do, so the uh, Janet Commission itself is legal, but it has its limits. It cannot deal with the president and bring any legal proceedings against the president. So it can investigate every other person from 1996 to January 2017 except the president. So That's an opinion. it's not illegal. Even TRRC is not illegal. It's just that one person in there, according to Section 69, should have been exempt. And that person is the president. So they can but do whatever a, they want. But, but that's an president. opinion. That's an okay. opinion for well, that. It, well, yeah, until until somebody contests it in black and white, that's what it says. When okay. the contest comes in, then the Supreme Court will interpret what it means. Okay, let me have here this, this, this again WhatsApp message. Again, it will have to be tested through the courts because the question then back as to who sets the yardsticks of um for what amounts to bring this dispute to the office of the presidency. And again, it will rest squarely on the Supreme Court to give its interpretation of this particular impunity. Now, yeah. this does not give anyone the legal standing to violate the provision of the other constitutional provision, nor does it give any other body um, vested jurisdiction to interpretation, of interpretation, rather. The law is yeah. clear. Jamek cannot be brought before the commission. If the executive wants to do so, they must have foremost laid the constitutional basis for this, and this, again, can only be done to the courts. I think yes. we are... Uh, no. Again. no, no, no. No, I think, I, I think, I think that's... Um, I do not agree with that, to be honest. Because, because the thing is, um, the thing is, it is um, it is not yet clear whether the Janet Commission falls within the remit of what Section sixty nine describes as a proceeding or not. It may be it may be the case that the government's legal advice advises them that the Janet Commission or a commission of, a commission of inquiry does not fall within the definition of a proceeding. That may be their legal um, their legal advice, and they would not be wrong. 
to come to a conclusion because it's a very it's a very it's a very broad term proceeding yeah. it can mean so many things and it, it, it a commission may be a proceeding or it may not be a proceeding it's still personally i think um it's still a question that the courts need to need to answer but i don't think it's it's as clear cut as most people are putting it so so yeah. so the legality of a commission is, is is still questionable until the courts decide what it is okay not the commission itself not the commission the, the legality of the commission is not in question what is in question here is the whether the commission, of the commission has jurisdiction whether the commission has jurisdiction over here oh, okay. okay yes okay yeah i mean anything on that so, yeah well i've i've made my point clear it's written in black and white the language is simple as well uh it says no uh legal civil or um civil civil or criminal proceedings should be entertained uh by by uh anyone in terms of when investigating the president under section 60 69 so it's simple they always say uh in law you don't have a power don't exercise it if you in doubt seek interpretation powers this brings us back to reforms that i told you at the beginning crc should have come in first of they should have sent those provisions to parliament to lift the immunity first and then proceeded with the rest but these people came in they had their eyes only on one thing and one thing only wealth material jamme let's make life hard for him they made that so much of a priority they got blinkered they forgot where they were going they were stumbling they were going into potholes they were coming out muddy bloody sometimes they didn't put things in the right place they should have started with constitutional uh, review commission first i think that's where it should have started review it change matters that you wanted to change and then set the commissions and investigate every single person you cannot go and jump and do commissions and go back and undo your work so now they sold the properties they cannot go back and undo it it's criminal bottom it should be facing economic charges right now you understand the man has abrogated the constitution more times than any justice minister probably in the history of our country so he's doing what he likes the man himself is monopolizes his department he's the minister is the attorney general is the director of public prosecution and he's the advocate he goes to court to try and prosecute young Bature. when he found out the contempt charges are way below the constitution they ditched it so what can you charge somebody with such immunity clauses he bypassed it and charged Yankuba for murder and maybe if Yankuba was involved in crimes against humanity he might have tried that too because those are the two things again that haven't been interpreted in terms of those immunity clauses. So some of those things are not absolute. Murder and crimes against humanity. You can just about bypass those immunity clauses. But we still needed interpretation in terms of those clauses. So what did Bartambiri do? He is the be all and end all. He wants all, all the power. He wants to be the director of prosecutions, the minister, the attorney general, and the advocate. He goes to court to advocate on behalf of the government. How on earth is that man going to be able to do anything meaningful, substantially, by doing everything, four portfolios, just by himself? How is he going to be able to do it? The answer is clear. He fumbled. He criminalized himself. Today, if Barrow had any spine, he should have arrested that man. He should have been in that mile two awaiting his charges for various, a range of offenses that he's committed since he came into office. This man is littered with mistakes from his brother to NIA-9, to freeing pedophiles, to freeing rapists, to attempted, botched attempt to change age limit, to many other things. And look at the Faraba Commission. Lots of other things he's done. He should have been arrested today and he should have been charged. You're on mute. Sorry, Lavin, are you now saying that Barack could have been the best president if he had not had Batamidu? If he if he didn't have some of the wolves that surround him now, he, well, would, have been, he would have done better. Yeah, because but the man is clueless. But the man specific. is clueless. Yeah, yeah the but, man be specific, and that has to do with because I think every issue in the Gambia today is is, is a question yeah. of legality right now. Yeah, we are exactly. We are, in, we are in a state of constitutional crisis right now. Interpretation: who does what and who could cause what what. And if that yeah. is the case, 
we, we have yeah. we have been um would you agree that yeah. yes but in, in as much as he's already been accused of being clueless um yeah. would you say that yeah um he could have done better without the the the, the, the without the 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 hiring of bar tamilu yeah would, you advice justice yeah absolutely justice minister is very very important in a government okay. especially a government that comes in and says everything else was wrong yesterday you needed yeah. a justice minister that should have said to him hang on we're just going to embark on reforms let's do the constitution first is a priority and then we go to security and civil service reforms in tandem all right they could have done both concurrently then after that set the commissions and then dismiss all civil servants and security personnel who were involved adversely mentioned by both commissions once you've been to court and sought the court's blessing. It would have been seamless. So you start with the constitution, go with civil and security reform, set the commissions to investigate, and then dismiss all these people or discipline them in accordance with the recommendations blessed by courts. Today, we will not be talking about a lot of things that we're talking about today. So by the time okay. knowing Barrow doesn't know any, anything, should have guided that man and said, this is how we do it. This is how it should be done. We've done it. We're happy. We've reformed the constitution. We've reformed the security services, civil services. We've done the commissions. We've got a new constitution. Hey, I want a second term to continue from there. Yeah, because I'm the will of God. I'm people's person. What we have now is not the will of God. What okay. we have now is, is a, a, um, a, an emissary of Satan running our country right now, <laughs> at least the Justice Department. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but anything on that, anything surrounding the, the, the legalities and constitutional crisis we, we are facing right now in the Gambia? Any, any? Uh, pers personally, I don't think I, I don't think we are in any constitutional crisis. I think what we have now is we have an independent judiciary. And even here in the United Kingdom, you must have seen it uh, during, the, during the time that the Brexit issue was going on. Mm -hmm. So all it shows is that the courts are independent. Unfortunately, we didn't have that under Lamin Tamba's government. So I'm sure if we had independent <laughs> courts under the under the APRC, I'm sure the judges would have been a lot busier. But we unfortunately we didn't have it. But yeah. but, but there you go. We have it today, and we are we are we are reaping the fruits. And even even though Jame denied denied all of us that, but today he's benefiting from something that um, that has been brought about after he was removed from office but for me really i am not going to be uh too uh, uh too harsh on on but i think i think he's um i think he's doing his best with um, um in a very difficult situation because personally i think um in hindsight what the government i'm sure what what the government should have done really is they should have um, they should have created a completely different ministry to deal with the issue of transitional justice because i think from the start they underestimated the work that was involved with transitional justice. Yeah. So I think it's not too late. They can still do it now. They need a separate ministry to deal with transitional justice. And then the justice ministry can deal with the reforms and day-to-day -day government business. I think had they done that, or even now, they can still do it now. If they do that, then Barton Bedu or whoever ends up becoming the justice minister would have more time and would be in a much better position to do all the things that they're supposed to be doing properly. But unfortunately, I, I cannot see it happening now because they have, what, less than 16 months to go. So unfortunately, I think the problems that uh, we've, we've seen so far are problems that are going to carry on for the, next, for the next 16 months, I think. Unfortunately, this reform agenda that the government was elected to, um, to implement, uh, in my view, I think it's already completely, it's already a complete failure. So in total, we have a failed state. Not, not a, well. If by failed state you mean by the the the, 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 the administration, yes. Okay, but apart ex, apart from the administration, where else is good? Because the administration, I would imagine, is what constitutes the government and is what we call in the government. Uh, we have do we have a failed government? Yes. When it, well, well, <laughs> when it comes to the issue of. Um, pursuing transitional justice, one, and secondly, when it comes to the issue of reforms. Because if we look at the reasons why this government was elected into office, one of them was constitutional reforms. 
mm. none has been has been uh, has been achieved so far. We have a draft constitution which has its problems, which I, I hope we are going to cover in this program, but I'm not going to go into right now. So yeah. that is there's still a big question mark on that one. Then we have transitional justice in terms of the um, the atrocities that were committed. The TRRC is ongoing. Who knows whether the TRRC is going to end up like the Janet Commission? Nobody knows. The Janet Commission is in limbo now. There, there are big question marks surrounding jurisdiction and, and other issues. So I, uh, with regards to the main issues that the government was, this government was elected to, um, to see through, the main policies and the main, um, main agenda, I think everything is a failure in my view. Yeah, um, thank you for that. Um, Lamin, do you have Lamin, do you have anything to add before we go on to the final final bits? Well, the first time I've agreed with him, apart from <laughs> uh, other things, is that the government, this government, is a total failure. We all agree. I, I bet even the government knows that. They know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. I, I think we have established that problem here. And now let's now come to the draft CRC. And oh, before that, I'm going to briefly have our insight of the current state of affairs in the Gambia, um, where it's been talked about everybody, justice for Haruna Jata as well, Haruna Jata as well. And, and Pa and Lamin, we have seen some Gambians um, going out in protest um, in support or, 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 or being part of the Black Lives Matter for what happened in the USA. For that in yeah. the Gambia, we do have our own problems, and we do also have our our, our black people, all our, our people, being, being killed, and no justice has been served so far. And and yeah. before uh, Lamin, um, I will tell you because of you have I think protested also uh, against 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 um um the government issuing I think a statement for a Gambian killing America and try to pursue justice and also yeah. the and also that and you did question why that yeah. and, and not and not home. So, yeah. um, what is the battle line between you and the government as far as this concern? What had happened? Well, the the government uh, putting out a statement in terms of Saudi tankers being blown is fine. <laughs> the government the government putting out statements about uh, Mr. Mohammed Lamin Sisa being killed in Atlanta is fine. Uh, but what I can't understand is, Baro government itself cannot conduct their own. Uh, wrongdoing properly. Well, by the time we went to Parliament, they asked him what stage the investigation of Haruna Jata was at. He said he didn't know. He was going to ask the army. So, Paos, this is a, the same thing we've had at the Commission of Inquiry, Jane, Jane Commission. We have the army been tasked to investigate itself in a shooting. You understand? How mm -hmm. do you expect uh, an impartial report from the army? So, Ben Suda, Ami Ben Suda was sitting at the Commission of Inquiry and she was investigating her own acts on the Jame. The same thing they're doing with the army. The army is supposed to investigate Haruna Jata's murder by themselves and feed back to the Justice Minister. The um, death of Sirifo Kujabi, who was murdered and thrown in a well in Madiana, which has not even been talked about. They said the army was investigating and they'll feed back. The army didn't. Well, maybe the army did, but we don't know. Okay, you understand. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to yeah. ask this question. Sorry, I was going to. In what yeah. position would yeah. the APRC stand? Yeah. To challenge yeah. such inquiry about the killing yeah. of one of their own. Yeah. In 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 what position of confidence would you stand to to, to I know every life matters. Yeah. Every death in a country um has to be investigated and. Yeah. Every person's life, um, if you kill a Gambian, one Gambian means yeah. a lot. You know? yeah. and, and in what position would the AFRC firmly stand or rely yeah. on to, to protest um, um, the lack of investigation of one of their own? Yeah. In this so now, yeah. Yeah. Now, the APRC itself, uh, as an institution, can investigate. As you know, with most of these investigations, they're supposed to be legal activities. The yeah. government was supposed to set up independent people to investigate stuff. So in law, even if I stole 10 bags of rice yesterday and the day before and I've had convictions and I go to court and I'm being investigated, they have to investigate that particular one. If I've been convicted before for something I've done, 
they have to investigate that particular case only. The only time my past will come into question is before they sentence me. They look at antecedents, the history. They look at that and say, well, uh, he has had a history of stealing rice before. Mm. And we caught him again for stealing rice. For, yeah. We're going to punish him harder. He will not have any allowance in terms of sentencing. So in law, they try as much as possible to be specific to the problem. So even though APS is accused of doing things in the past, should not stop APRC advocating for an investigation investigation into the murder of another person or into the murder of two other people. So APRC has every right to push Baro government to investigate Haruna Jata's murder, okay. independent invest investigation, and Siri Fokuyabi. That will not be whatever people accuse us of in the past should not be a pretext for criminality under the Baro government. They okay. need to investigate this case with the same energy, the same resources that they're putting into investigating uh, activities that happened in 1994. So okay. the Baro government need to come up with some, and these cases are fresh. They did okay. it themselves. Haruna Jata's investigation should have been concluded a long time ago. Same yeah. with Sirifo Kujabi, same with five other people who died in police custody, and the other guy that was stabbed in Kololi or Kotu Tavan by security service and other people and Faraba. Those things that have been concluded, they are fresh. If they cannot demonstrate that they can investigate those cases and prosecute the uh, players in them, what chance have they got of prosecuting a 1994, a historic case of 1994 or 1995 or 2010 or 2012? How are they going to prosecute those cases when the freshest case cannot be prosecuted by them? This yeah, is why but, this government is going to fail. But let me they haven't... They just haven't seen the willingness to do the simplest of things, and that's where they're failing. But Lion, the difference could be the evidence presented. True, evidence is crucial. Who yeah. shot Haruna Jata? It was on video. The police officers who were shooting the line of the front line, there was Facebook Live when Kanilai people were protesting. All they had were placards, and when they wanted to go to and they stopped them, they just burned the tires. There was no stone thrown. That's Facebook Live. Everything was available. They didn't investigate it. Faraba was live again. People were videoing it. They know which paramilitaries went. What happened? They pulled it. But somebody said they didn't tell him when they tried to pull the case out of court. Yeah? But he's the justice minister. So these things, the evidence is there. The murders of the Barrow government have got evidence. Yes, the guy that was thrown in a well will be a sophisticated investigation. But even that, the witness that tip up tipped off the security services said he saw paramilitary beating the guy prior to his body being found in a well. They saw okay. the paramilitary apprehend him and beat him. Okay. Who, which paramilitary were on duty at that part of the uh, Madiana when it happened? Well, so, good point. Well, good point. Yeah, and, go ahead. Yeah. Like, so, and Pa, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come to you on this right now. Um, we've had, I'm going to repeat myself, um, the same question to Lamin and then, and then also um, we are trying to, there's been all of us, social media rumors about justice to Gambia, justice from the Gambia force, justice among ourselves and then tribalism. And also a specific case was mentioned with the Harona Jata, that why why is he less of a Gambian than any other person died in another country? So um, what is your perception of, of, of the public outcry versus the efforts of the government? Right. Uh, yes, for me, when it comes to this issue of how people back in the Gambia are, and even in, in the diaspora, most people are jumping onto this Black Lives Matter thing, mm -hmm. and uh, which is all well and good. It's good because whenever whenever a wrongdoing um, happens, regardless of who it happens to and what part of the world it happened in, a wrongdoing is always a wrongdoing. It, it, it cannot be right just because it doesn't. it's not closer to home. Yeah. So it's right for, for, for us to condemn it, and it's right for, for those in the Gambia to condemn it as well. But what we should be um, taking from this, in my view, I know that there are people back in the Gambia who are planning a protest. Um, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong, wrong with the protest, but, but if it stops there, then that's where the problem is. What we should be doing is we should be drawing inspiration from what's happening around the world with regards to this Black Lives Matter thing, following the, um, the horrific uh, murder of George Floyd in the United States. So back in the Gambia, we have our own problems. 
when it comes to equality, when it comes to bigotry, when it comes to tribalism, when it comes to all the other isms, Gambia has lots of it. But I know most people would not like me to say this. Most people would just like to like to sell this thing that oh, Gambia no problem, everything is fine. No, not everything is fine. We have lots of problems yeah. that we that we need to address because we have even in the Gambia we have this caste system, and yeah. I'm sure you must have had a few months ago in the, in the Upper River region. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of the one of the ethnic groups they had some issues yeah. because uh, because obviously just because something is accept is acceptable behavior uh, by virtue of a particular tradition it doesn't make it right it's wrong yeah and the saddest part of it is both the 1997 constitution and the current draft constitution exempt from protection from discrimination groups which suffer discrimination as a result of these practices because say for for instance if for instance i belong to an ethnic um, a particular ethno linguistic group which classifies me as a slave then they treat me as a slave then i have no protection under the constitution that is what is in the 1997 constitution and that is in the draft constitution which obviously all these people who are saying that they want to protest about Black Lives Matters, all of them are endorsing this constitution as a progressive document. It's not because it is justifying and it is exempting from um, it exempting from protection the very classes of individuals that these people are coming out to um, to, to 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 say they are protesting in favor of. Obviously, the black blacks in America are a minority group. Blacks in the UK are a minority group. So obviously, if we had a law like this here in the UK. Or in America, we will all be jumping and saying, "Oh, it's, it's racism." Yes, it, it, we would be, and for the right reasons. But what we should be doing, do, uh, what we should really be doing, is we should be setting our priorities right. Yes, it's okay to uh, to support causes against injustice in other parts of the world, but we have our own problems too. We should not be ignoring our own problems and pretending as if, "Oh, it's only the white man that's racist." Or it's only the white man that that's bigoted. No, some of our people, some of the views that we hold, I can name a number of groups. Even the Ahmadis in the Gambia, they are they are persecuted, and nobody see that as uh, as a cause that that's worthy of 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 fighting. Yeah. And I am sure we we saw in the TRC the the, the um that community in Kermot Hali. I think they call themselves the Lions. They have been persecuted, and yeah. even though. And even though after the departure of Jam, well, this government can easily conveniently say, oh, it was not us, it was Jame. But after Jame, after Jame left, these lions won a high court case and the judgment was for the government to return them back their properties that was seized from them. But the government, this sitting government has refused to recognize the judgment and they've refused to comply by, with the judgment. So I, I am sort of, I was a bit dumbfounded, to be honest, when I saw that um, certain groups in the Gambia are planning a protest for, um, protest to, um, in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. Yes, that's, that's all well and good, but it should not stop there. That should, be, that should be the start. It has to be the starting line, whereby us as Gambians, we have to start looking inwards and look at our own problems, our caste systems how we treat minorities, how we treat Christians, how we treat Ahmadis, how we treat these lions, and how we treat people within our traditional settings, whom our caste systems class as slaves. All these are human beings, and they all deserve human rights, and they all deserve respect, dignity, and they all deserve the protection of the law. So we should be championing these causes. It should not just be, we should not just all jump because it was a white man that did something to a black man. Black people do yeah. very terrible things to black people too. Yeah. Gambians yeah. do very terrible things to black people, to, to, to Gambians too, just because they think they are of an inferior caste or just because you think this person is of an inferior ethnicity or an inferior religion. We do very horrible things to each other. So we need to be looking at those things. And this brings me into, um, because I was just a few days ago, I was reading this report that was i think it was a report on the gambia about uh, from the um, by the um, convention for civil and political rights 
and the report was two years is two years old it was it was compiled or it was published in 2018 and in the report uh, there were a, a number of recommendations that were made for the uh, for the Gambia government to implement and one of them was recommending for the Gambia government to basically make sure that they pass an equality legislation what that would do is that would make sure that the rights of not just minorities but the rights of everybody on the grounds of the seven protected characteristics race gender religion ethnicity you name it all those characteristics are protected so that people would not suffer discrimination whether it is in the workplace or whether it's in the, in public space or whether it's even in the private space because we have to have these protections in place Paos, you and i and lamin tamba are here in the uk we are minority groups if i go to work and i suffer discrimination there's a law there's the equalities act yeah. that i can fall back on yeah. and, and 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 seek justice yeah. but in the gambia if you are discriminated where's the law that you're going to fall back on it doesn't exist so what this is why i'm saying but, but section 25 of the 97 constitution it, it guarantees the the, the the freedom and and the rights of every individual will not suffice enough or do you want anything more on that yes there has to be a primary legislation okay to make to, 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 to there has to be primary legislation to okay. enable enable that protection to be complete okay because unless that unless that happens yes it offers some protection yeah but it is incomplete which it's is why here in the uk we have Yes, which is why here in the UK we have the Equality Act 2010. Yeah. So all of us can rely on that, and it uh, and there are no exemptions yeah. on there. Whether you are black, white, blue, green, it doesn't matter. There, there are no exemptions. But in the Gambia, a recommendation has been made by this uh, Convention for Civil and Political Rights, which the Gambia government is with the Gambia is a um, is a signatory. But since 2018, the government has just ignored that. And for some reason, just like Lamin Tamba have said, the government has the goal to to point fingers at the United States. I'm sorry, we have our problems. We need to address them. Thank you. Uh, and I think this was what many has been echoing, that we are not um, disregarding a life loss elsewhere, but how about our domestic problems, which which we like blue on blue. Yeah. This is it, it's more of a killer. Uh, we, I think we have more of blue on blue than even blue on white, um, you know, yeah. if, if you know what I mean. So, so I mean, anything to say on that? Because I want, I want to limit myself to only two hours. Um, do you have anything to say quickly before no, we go? No, no. Pa Pasambu summed it quite well. We have our own divisions in our country. We need to tackle those, and we need to tackle them very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now we're talking about employment going one side. If you're not connected, you don't get anything. If you're not connected, you don't get jobs. So we need to tackle this. The Equality Act, something similar to that. If we have it in the Gambia, it will ensure we employ people who are competent to do jobs. And in fact, if we want to go further, we can do the blind application for jobs where no one puts their uh, name there. We go by digital or codes. You turn up to an interview and no one knows what your name is or your surname is because the surname is always the problem. Yeah. You go to an interview, they don't know who is outstanding. Once you've done your interview and they offered candidate 201 serial number, candidate 101 serial number, then your identity can come because they've given you an offer, you've accepted it, you send all your documentation, your ID and everything, and you start the job. At that stage, none of them will revoke, unless, of course, you have like a history of criminality or other things that will buy you from getting the job. But if we have that legislation, and there's nothing like that that can buy you from getting the job, and they stop you from getting the job because you're a Sambu or Cham or Tamba, you can take them to court and say, hang on, I was offered this job. And then when they found out, when I sent my ID, my password and everything, they found out I was a Tamba and they refused me the job. And they have to compensate you. Or the court might even order that the job should be offered to you first if you refuse it, because if they discriminate you before you get the job, when you get the job, that discrimination is going to continue. So in most cases, you probably take compensation for that job rather than take the job because the people who don't want you in that department will be the people that are going to oversee your probation and your employment. And if you okay. had that fight even before you start, it's likely you're going to have a bad experience in that particular capacity. So we can have the Equalities Commission or Race and Equalities Commission or in the Gambia, maybe Tribes and Equalities Commission, and then we have that there. Everyone knows that there's primary legislation that says this is how 
a job application should be conducted. This is how an interview should be conducted. If you get sacked, these are your rights. If you get sacked under this, these are your rights. So yes, oh. Pastor Bush summed it up very well. We can. I'm happy with that. Okay, thank you. And uh, um, we're gonna come to this. I'm not. We would. I would not dwell so much on the draft constitution, which I would have loved because. I know Pastor who has done a very extensive job and a good analysis of, of um, the, the draft constitution, trying to compare yeah. then and before. But one yeah. bit I will, will just want to say, um, I will want to pick out from them, this is secularism of, of the Gambia. Pastor, you, you have yeah. been doing so much on that, that, they, that, that Christians uh, will not be protected for one extent. So um, um, what is your view, Apa? Why will you differ from, from, from this? Um, because culturally, we all tend to see everyone, everyone equal in, in the Gambia. Yeah. We tend to treat everyone equal in the Gambia. But there is a document that even the farmer, may not even know what 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 even the Christian farmer or the or the Muslim farmer may not know exactly to what extent you are protected and your right is as opposed to Senegal. I see one of your post big um um a cut from the Senegal's constitution. In Senegal is a secular state where all are equal before the law. And yeah. why would Gambia not have that? And and pa, what is your stake on that? Yes, uh, I think um, we we, ha we have a very unfortunate situation in the in the Gambia because um, because the um, the very people who are supposed to be to be enlightening the public and who are supposed to be educating the public are the very people who are sort of trying to um, trying to um, sell the public a narrative which is false. So right from the start, there has been this agenda and and they've done a very good good job at it to basically just um just uh, um give the word uh, the term secular give it a meaning that frank frankly speaking is um is laughable so which was why when i looked into the issue then i realized that senegal actually has the word secular in their constitution and senegal um i, I don't think anybody can argue that senegal um is a very religious country, whether whether we are talking about Islam or whether we are talking about Christianity. Because, in fact, when it comes to Christianity, um, the um, in Senegal there are more Christians in Senegal than there are in Gambia. And when it comes to the um, when it comes to the holy places, or, or the, um, the, um, when it comes to the holy places that Christians normally go to for pilgrimage, in the Gambia is Kunkudem Mariama. In Senegal, they have Popongin and others. The ones in Senegal, they are even they, they are even more uh, they, they are even more, um, bigger than the ones in in, in Gambia in, in in terms of in the context of of Christianity. When I say Christianity, I mean the Catholics in, in the context of the Catholic um, denomination. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now moving on, moving on from that, um, it has been decided that yes, the word secular would not be put in the constitution, which is which is fine, because we don't necessarily have to have the word secular. In the constitution for the constitution to be secular but what we need to have in the constitution it has to be very clear that uh, the state would be neutral on matters of religion which if you look at the draft constitution it's not because if you look at the 1997 constitution you can see the 1997 constitution when it comes to the issue of religion it struck a very fine balance in terms of the level of the, the level of involvement the state or state state affairs will have over religion and vice versa which is why in the 1997 constitution there is the there is the cardi court obviously yeah. which only deals with matters of family law and inheritance for members of the muslim community who wish to submit themselves to the jurisdiction of the courts this is this is the difference i know there are some commentators i'm not gonna i'm not gonna point out any names because they're not here to defend themselves it would not be it would not be fair yeah yeah but I've yes. Seen, yes but i've seen so many so many um commentators on this issue they're saying that oh when the draft constitution passes the muslims are going to have an option with sharia no there's no option trust me yeah there, there, yeah. there would absolutely be no option it would yeah. be compulsory yeah it would be yeah. compulsory so because the trouble, the problem I have with the draft constitution is it has departed from the position of the 1997 constitution in that rather than having the Kadi courts there, what they've done is they've created a parallel Islamic uh, uh, legal system alongside yeah. the common law legal system. Now, the, the question is, the question now is, okay, 
if the intention of doing that is to make sure that the uh, the rulings of the Cadi court are developed and jurisprudence in Islamic law in the family courts, in family 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 law in Islamic in, in, jurisprudence in in Sharia in on the family law is developed in the Gambia. Then that that is fine. I don't have a problem with that. But then where the problem comes in is you look at section ten, which is the laws of the Gambia. If you look at section ten, I'm not sure whether you can bring it up. Is it the old or the new? The new one. If you look at section 10, which is the laws of the Gambia, it is not entrenched. Okay, now, if you have an Islamic uh, uh, an Islamic court structure, then you have a common law court structure. Then section 10, which basically details the laws of the Gambia, is not entrenched. Then what that means is, at any time in the future, any government can easily amend section 10, and Sharia law can be the only source of Gambian law. And that is a problem because once you pass this draft constitution in its current form, it means an Islamic state can come in at any time. If the intention is yes, you want the Muslims, uh, the members of the Muslim community to be able to, um, to pursue their matters on family law from the high court all the way to the Supreme Court, that's fine. You can maintain that structure there, but it has to be, but we have to have safeguards in the constitution to ensure that the jurisdiction and the scope of the sharia law will not extend into the criminal law other areas of civil law without a referendum in the future but if you if you have this court system then you leave section 10 on entrenched then what that leaves open is any future government can come in and make a very simple amendment of section 10 and sharia law will go into other areas and that's a problem and mm -hmm. this has been something that I have been pointing out to people, but unfortunately, people, most people are more focused on the political aspects of this yeah. document yeah. rather than the aspects which really matter, which, which is human rights. So this is one human right element. And also there are others, but I'm sure because of, for time reasons, it would not be unfair if I carry on, carry on speaking because I'm sure yeah. Lamin Tamba would want to come in. Yeah, as well. I mean, yeah. I think I, I was even gonna. You send me the, the, the you send me one. Send me the def, the, the the the. I think that was a PowerPoint slide you would make up trying to compare and contrast it too. I was gonna bring it up, but that is a whole topic of its own which we, we can explore after. I think I think I remember last time I did invite you, but we could not we could not um meet up with the time. But we will have to come on some other day and discuss purposely on the difference between the two and where we think as civil society. Or players in, in in the field to, to, to highlight the, those problems. I mean, what is your take on, on on that difference between the 97 and and the 90 2019 it, as far as secularism is concerned? And um, it's been a long debate. And then again, we try to compare APRC yeah. and, and and the federal government. You as a spokesperson, what was the position of the APRC in in this new draft? All right. Uh, so I'll start the difference between 1997 and and. Uh, the 2020 draft, uh, that section in terms of uh, the laws that govern the government. Uh, so the difference between the 1997 constitution and the different and the draft constitution is the difference between Jamme and Baru. Who do you think is a better communicator between the two? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? Okay, I'll tell you. Jamme is a way better communicator. Okay. The constitution and the draft are exactly that. 1997 constitution with all its executive power made communication very clear. It said Cardi court or Sharia law is optional on the Muslims. If they want to go via Sharia law, it will be binding, uh, provided that the parties involved agree to be subjected to the Sharia law or the Cardi court. So you are saying... In it, so yeah. you are saying you are implying that in 1997, the, the, yeah. the that there is an option for you to go for Cardi. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, if you want, yeah, if you want. So the default, okay. the default law for the government under the 1997 constitution okay. is the common law. Okay, so Paos, you and I, if we have problems and you want to take me to uh Sharia law because you are the firstborn, so if you go to Sharia law, you probably get a lion's share of the judgment. Or if you're a man and a woman and you go to Sharia law or Cardi court and you're inheriting stuff from your father, 
the man gets a lion's share compared to the woman. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. common law, in common law, you don't have that. If Paos and his wife built an empire together, and then Pao suddenly decides, I'm going to chuck my wife aside, you go to common law, they'll look at what you built together, and they'll share it equally. Yeah, sometimes but... if, you, if you've been the unreasonable person, they'll share it in favor of the woman. Depends on who's reasonable and who isn't. So yeah, what but... the government needs to do in the draft, uh -huh. tell Gambian people, common law is the default law. Okay? But if you want to go to Sharia law, you have powers. The, the rulings of the Sharia law will be binding if you agree to go by it. You cannot go Sharia law, lose your case, and think, oh, no, I'm going to go common law now. No. You yeah, cannot but, but, have that. But, but, but Lamin, if that's the case, yeah. then we are giving yeah. people options in, in, in regards to how we implement the laws of the land. If 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 if, if Because everybody else, what the, what the law seeks to address is it, it, in quality, uh, equality among before the law, and that's what you yeah. mentioned here, Equality Act. And then, if yeah, you well, um, an Equality yeah. Act um, to to treat everyone equal at the place of work, you might as yeah. well do another act that people have an option where they could they could skip that that act. Right. Yeah. If you ask me as an individual, as a human being, if you ask me today, what I want in the nineteen in the draft constitution, I would say just leave common law. Yes, the law of the government. Simple. Right. Absolutely right. Yes. If you go to an Arabic school or you want to go somewhere else and you go to your teacher or, or whoever sits in a car, the separate court system, and you want to be subjected to it, it's the same as part of you and I having a dispute and we're going to our Alcalo to adjudicate or we're going to our chief for the chief to de decide. It's not illegal. If the chief says we have 10 cattle and you, you and I are pushing and pulling, let each of us take five. Or we invested differently, Paos takes uh, six and I take four, and we agree to it, period. The law itself is about reasonableness. The law is not a tool for punishing most of the time. It's a tool for correcting stuff. You understand? The punishment comes when you cannot correct something. Then they say, all right, you go and get punished. You understand? So the law is there for reasonableness. If we agree something, why would we go to court? What's the point? Why are we going to court for? You understand? So the law of the government has to be common law. Simple. But okay. if you want to go Sharia law and you agreed to it before you started litigating and then the ruling was made, you cannot then turn around and cry. We have a women. Sharia law, yes, Islamic way, we don't see it as discrimination. But in the modern world, the ruling of a Sharia law might be discriminatory to women. Hmm. Christians won't want to go to Sharia law. My wife is Christian. If we go to Sharia law, how is she going to be bound by it? You understand? You cannot have two laws running concurrently. You have to make one optional and one compulsory. So, so, wants to go... so the best thing is, and to conclude on it, would be for the law to be silent on religion. Yeah, and, and so, come on, law. Yeah, you, yeah, you hmm. have to say one thing. What these people are trying to do. They're pushing Gambia. Gambia is actually closer to an Islamic state under the draft constitution yeah. than Jamia that they were blaming yes in yesteryear. So, but you understand? Do, but does the people do the people know these things? Because of, I think um um section I think one nine two civic education we need to have these things. Yeah. I'm not sure the Gambians know about the, the 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 importance or the difference of secularism and not. And and I think the key word here is that yeah. the, this the law should be silent on religion simple should be neutral the, okay the the, the the thing is the constitution is uh, is supposed to be neutral on yes. matters of religion yes it's, it's just supposed neutral. to be neutral because 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 okay i know that there's one i cannot i cannot remember the, the exact section but i know there's one section in the constitution i think it's section 140 something i can't remember draft or the new? i think is is a draft the draft i think um, is section 1 30 something is under the parliamentary sections which says parliament cannot pass a law to um to introduce a state religion that's th that provision is is um do it doesn't serve any purpose no because, because if the parliament is there then something something would cook up a, a religion has been established already exactly. you cannot stop parliament yes. you cannot stop parliament from doing something that already exists yes 
Yeah. Yes, because by establishing a religious legal order in the constitution, yeah. what the uh, what the drafters have effectively done is yeah. they have established a state religion inside exactly. the state. Even if so they have, does, does not need to pass the law. Even if they have not said it, but that section where the parliament says it cannot, yeah. that preempted something that happened before or about to happen already, and yeah. the parliament will have no power over it. Is, is, that, is, that, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, the point I'm making, the, the point I'm making is they are trying to stop something. They are trying to stop a future a parliament doing something which already exists. Yes. Be because you are saying that parliament cannot pass a law to impl uh, to introduce a state religion, but a state religion has already been established under the first constitution. Exactly. So parliament don't need to do that. All a future parliament needs to do is amend section 10. And there you go. We have it, Islamic State. Yeah. So he is right. We're closer to it now than the Jammeh they were blaming because Jammeh's one is a facade. It's a big headline. But effectively, the constitution didn't change. People yeah, operated because... like they were before. Now, it's actually becoming legal. And this is where we are now. And these people are keeping quiet on it because most of them, deep down, they want to push us into an Islamic state. Something they said was bad before. Now they're trying to push us into it quietly. You understand? So secular thing is not absolutely necessary. But if you omit secular and then you put an Islamic law into the constitution, so where are we heading? Islamic state, isn't it? Yeah. That's where we're heading gradually. So this is the danger. I don't have a problem with Islamic law. As long as it allows Christians to perform properly, there's no discrimination. We cannot yeah. discriminate against our women. Yeah. Our women deserve every single thing in our country right now. They've suffered for far too long. And we know if there's inheritance, if there's marriage issues, the man always comes on top. Unfortunately, that's how Islamic law is. All right? You go and steal one bottle of water, you could lose your hand or your fingers and other things. So if we have to apply it strictly, everyone else will be subject to it. I think we need to go back to PPP and APRC, where common law is the default. If okay. you want to go via Sharia, it's up to you. Okay. We need to change that. They need to make that absolutely clear in the draft constitution that the main piece of uh, um, law for the government is common law, period. Yeah. If Thank you want to go Sharia law, you, it's up to you. There will be a card in court. The ruling will be binding. But you cannot go there, not get what you want, and then you want to come back to common law and waste state resources. That shouldn't happen. Thank you. I, I, I think we will need to have another program where yeah. where where um we would um we would have this discussion because it's very because people still now did not understand um that yeah. we just the the, the 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 neutrality of the constitution in regards to religion or or what yeah. silent and and we yeah. need we need to hit that hard on on, on hammer last but not yeah. the least before we go gay rights we have seen yeah. that this has been a very controversial topic and 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 yeah. <laughs> Are uh, you you laugh so well by younger living um we still yeah. having this issue of of gay writing in the gambia and yeah is this something that the gambia should well we are talking about the protecting the rights of the individual in a country gays yeah. are for example gambians why would they be exempt from the law is it because by nature of their physical differences or by nature of their sexual orientation or why would we say yes and why would we say no on, on that but i'll let you go well, for yeah okay. I'll, I'll, you know I'll, you know uh uh, 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 uh Paus, we have um we, we have an issue in the gambia especially among the gambians that live in the diaspora or the gambians that used to live in the diaspora for most Gambians, whenever they travel to the diaspora, whether it's America, UK, or Europe, they are pro-human rights, they are left-wing, they are socialist, <laughs> and they'll, they'll embrace all the human rights and all the minority rights, but because obviously there are minorities in these countries. Yeah. But once they go home, they become the Gambia's version of KKK. Yeah. We, have, we have to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be fair. We have to. You cannot be. You cannot be a socialist abroad, and a conservative at home. You have to be one. Let's be fair. If you are going to be, a, if you are going to be uh, against minority rights in the Gambia, you have to be against your own minority rights abroad. 
But yeah. you cannot be advocating for yourself, for your own personal interest in somebody else's country. But when you come back home, you advocate the complete opposite for people who are minorities within your community. So for me, when it comes to this gay right issue, personally, I do not think um, Gambia has an issue when it comes to homosexuality. It has never been a problem, and it is not a problem. I am sure Lamin Tamba would, would disagree with me here. I don't know. No, but, I, I think I had a minister saying one time saying that we don't have a problem with gay in the Gambia. We don't. We yeah. don't yes. because the issue of the issue of homosexuality was brought up by Yaya Jame and given so much relevance. Because obviously, it was in Jame's interest to distract everybody's attention away from the mess that he was creating. Obviously. So if he brings up gays, then obviously everybody will focus on gays, whereas Jame would just easily carry on doing what Jame was doing. So personally, I think it was a distraction that after Jame, we just need to disregard. Personally, I think what the Gambians want from their government is for the government to make sure that there's an enabling environment for businesses to come to the country and employ them, employ their kids and um, and pay taxes so that the government has enough money to provide the services and good roads, medical facilities and everything for everybody else. The number one problem that Gambians face today is how they are, how, 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 how they are going to go about um, um, how are we going to go about sourcing three square meals a day? These are the problems that our people face. Is the li their livelihoods, good jobs, good education, good hospital, and good roads. Personally, I think these are the things that we should focus on. But using so much energy on the issue of gay rights, personally, it is not a problem, and it is not an issue. It is yeah, an but... issue, it is a complete distraction. Because I, have not, I don't know of any Gambian I do not know of any Gambian who has, who has ever died in, in that country or has ever suffered in that country as a result of something that was done by a gay person. No, but our people, basically the suffering and all the hardship that our people are facing are a result yep. of corruption, underdevelopment, and all these things. We but should pa, be focusing on those things. Pa, pa, sorry to cut you here, um, but <laughs> the, 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 the discussion here is for the Gambian government from the EU to legalize gay or to protect their rights. Um, um, personally, are we looking at them as individual or are we looking at protecting their rights and at the same time criminalizing the act of gay in the Gambia? Or are we talking about here, the gay as a person in the Gambia freely and, 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 and happily exercising their, 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 their sexual orientations in public without being arrested? Okay, from, from, from what I can understand, from, from what I can understand from what the EU said, and I know the National Human Rights Commission have said, um, have echoed similar sentiments, yeah. which I have noticed that Imam Babali has been coming, coming under, under some, some attack from certain sections of, of, of the political, the, the, the political um, edifice. I think, he I, think those, I think those attacks are unfair because what the EU and what the National Human Rights Commission are saying is, they are not saying legalize it. They are saying protect them. I think these two things are not the same thing. Because if somebody yeah. is saying, "Oh, you have to protect, you have to protect detainees in police cells, or you have to protect criminals," it's not, um, it's not the same as saying you have to legalize crime. No, because obviously, even the prisoners that are in mile two, they deserve the protection of the law, so that nobody yeah. is going to um, is going to um, is going to treat them in a way that is not in line with the law. They yeah. deserve protection as much as every other human being. So saying you need to provide protection for somebody is not the same as saying you have to legalize, legalize their actions. Okay. Criminals yeah. deserve protection. Yes, I cannot just go just because, for example, I am a prison officer. I cannot just go and decide to molest or decide to, to abuse a prisoner just because they have committed a crime. No. Yes, they have committed a crime. The crime does not have to be protected by the, by the state. But the criminal deserve protection of the law, and this is what the National Human Rights Commission is saying. Okay, and from my understanding, this is what the EU is saying. But obviously, there are certain individuals, certain political figures in our society, unfortunately, who are just who are just um, who just see this as an uh, as an opportunity for them yeah. to to cultivate yeah. political capital, which is unfair. 
And I think the attack that Imam Babali has come under is, is very unfair because I think he's a very he, he's a very decent person. I think most of the things that people are saying about him are very unfair. And I hope and I hope he's not going to give in to what these people are saying and resign. I no, think the I think, job yeah. that he's doing at the National Human Rights Commission, he's doing a very good job there, and I yeah. think he should stay. He yeah. should not listen to um to these extremists and uh, and, uh, and and resign. Yeah, but it's still now some people are, are still um. I think um, the Gambia government, like like Tamba has said, communication is our problem, and and how to get out the message there. And like you rightly said, the same thing I said somebody last week. It's not about yeah. protecting the act or, or protecting what is already not acceptable. Like yeah. you give an example, the the the, 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 the establishment of the um, human right, um, the Geneva Convention as a result of protecting prisoners. We are not saying yeah. they are not guilty in the act, but we are saying after getting them. And give them free trial, protect them. Yeah. You know, be, be, yeah. be concerned about their safety, about their health, and and guarantee free and fair trial. This is what I think. I think this is the message that should come yeah. out clearly. Uh, if I'm right, yeah. like I'm, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be to be frank with you, I think I saw a tweet from the EU on Twitter saying decriminalize same-sex relationships in the Gambia. So not only are they asking for protection, because as far as I'm concerned, same-sex relationship in the Gambia, people are still protecting them. The government is protecting I can't remember when the Jamaica government arrested somebody for being gay. Maybe it happened before, uh, but I can't remember them arresting somebody for being gay. However, decriminalizing and protecting it are two different things. You know on the Jamaica, even if you stole something, you dare not take the law into your hand and kill the thief like they did about two or three months ago. A young boy was beaten to death for just going in through a window to steal something. He was unarmed. They beat him in the Gambia to death. These things stopped between now. When I was young, if you went to steal something in Talinding and they said, Sache, you headed to the nearest police station. Because if they caught you, a six-inch nail went into your head or they tied you into a sack and threw you into the Talinding River. You know what I'm saying? So in the Gambia, these things, um, the gay people, when I was young and I go to downtown on holidays, I saw people that they said were gay. They're going about that. This is in the mid-90s, late-90s. They said they were gay. They never, they were never put, um, arrested and punished. People still let them go about their business. So they're protected. You know what I'm saying? So to decriminalize it takes it from a personal level. On a personal level, I don't care. What you do behind closed doors is your problem. If you want to be gay, your business. However, government and decriminalizing is a public property. The EU is asking Gambia to be democratic. And for democracy to operate, you have to operate according to the way the majority want government to operate. Democracy is majority rule. You have to protect the minority but the majority decide which way the government will run. You understand? So for the government to run for the majority, majority of governments are saying, no, do not discriminalize, de decriminalize same-sex relationships. We don't want it. Okay? And it's a democracy. Government is about the people. If 90% of Gambia says we do not want it uh, decriminalized, who are you as a government to go and de decriminalize? You try it. The next election you'll be down. In this country, they 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 made female circumcision illegal. Polygamy is called bigamy in this country. You can marry two wives, but you can only register one. If you try and register two wives as your legally wedded wives, you go to jail. You understand? In Africa, it's fine. They will not accept bigamy here or polygamy is the right term for it. They will not accept female circumcision here. But ours culturally, we accept it. So you, you have to be sensitive sometimes. It's cultural sensitivity. But people are not beating gay people. Believe me, in the tourist industry and downtown, people know who's gay. You understand? But nobody's jumping on them and beating them up because they're gay. You, know, you will get skirmishes. Sometimes they even beat somebody because they're seeing a teenager with a girl. They beat them because a teenager is not supposed to have any sexual relationship between boy and girl. So sometimes they beat people because they're thieves. Sometimes they beat people because they've done something they don't like. 
gay people are protected in the Gambia as far as I know. What these people want is to decriminalize it. And the majority are saying no. You know, when it comes to government, it's not personal decisions. You might have your own drive and you drive it on the population. But if the people say no to it, it will not happen. And that's the so, position. So yeah, let me look at it from the government perspective. So Lamin, from the point of APRC as a policy, um yeah. decriminalizing <laughs> gay in the Gambia, would that be a yes or no? Still answer. Oh, APRC made it absolutely clear that decriminalizing same-sex relationship is an absolute no. It's not going to happen. So if you, if on an APRC government, will it be a policy to arrest yeah. and prosecute and jail a, um, if any person who is found guilty of being a gay or acting like a gay? Yeah, if they're caught in public. Remember, that's private and public. Government administers what happens in public. If, as it stands in the APRC policy, if you got caught in public practicing same-sex relationship stuff, you will be prosecuted for it Thank because you. it's illegal. Yes. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. And and uh, any any last word from you? No, I I know uh, there there was a question asking me about how yes how do I expect, can I tell them how gay people can be protected? This one. Yes. Uh, yes. Just like just just like the example that I have given. Even people who have committed crimes like stealing and people who have even murdered individuals deserve yeah. protection under the law. Absolutely. So just Absolutely. because you are protecting um, the criminal or somebody who has committed an offense does not necessarily mean that you are protecting the crime that they have committed. No, you haven't. So yeah. according to um, gay people protection, it means that what the government re should really be doing is making sure that obviously things don't happen to them that shouldn't really happen, especially people taking the law into their own hands. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the National Human Rights Commission was saying. I know Lamin Tamba has said something that the EU has tweeted. I have not come across that tweet, but I think um, our society is not ready yet to, to sort of to, um, to legalize same-sex marriages and things like that. So, so I think... Um, what is your final verdict on that? Are you in the same line with APRC? In terms of the gay issue, yes. So, no, for me, it's, for me, I don't see it as, as a problem. I, I, I would rather, I would rather our government focus on things that are problems for the Gambia. Papa, so, uh, yes or no answer? It's a distraction, Paos. Trust me, the, the <laughs> issue of homosexuality in the Gambia is a complete distraction. No, I mean, but it's not what is the problem? Yes because, or no? No, pa, Paos, Paos. When it comes to when it comes to making public policy, you make public policy to address a problem. But yes, you yes. can't make public policy to address a problem that only exists in your head. So it how exists in reality? So how would Gambia government respond to the EU then? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Gambia the Gambia government to say to EU. The Gambia government to say to EU. Right now, gay people are protected. People are practicing same-sex relationships in the Gambia. We have not arrested anyone. We have not protect, uh, prosecuted anyone under those stuff. But to decriminalize it is going against the grain of Gambian people. The government is there to protect the nation, the entirety. But governments will run in accordance with what the majority are but Lamin, So you are, yeah. Lamin, you are telling the EU we are protecting those who are involved in the criminal act. Yeah, of course. It, look. Until yeah. somebody's convicted, until somebody's convicted, they're not criminal. Okay. Well, they're that's a fine. Suspect. Yeah, they're a suspect. They're alleged. They're here and there, yeah. interested parties, whatever term you give it. Okay. When they're convicted, then they become a criminal. Okay. You understand? What? What? So even if you catch somebody right in broad daylight, he cut somebody else's neck, you have to protect the one that cut somebody else's neck and mm. let the law take its course. Okay. You understand? Uh, yeah. okay. What you cannot do, leave your house in the Gambia, holding hands, kissing and cuddling in public as same sex. That's when it becomes illegal. You understand? That's okay. what EU wants the government to decriminalize. And any okay. government that does that in the Gambia today will fall at the next election. I can tell you that. But you have to respond, yes or no, because APRC has responded. What is your response? Somebody say it here. <laughs> No, no, pa pa just, 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 just like I explained. Just like I explained. No, but yes, but no, pa. Do you want it? 
No, you know, yes and yes and no answers are very problematic because <laughs> public policy, you make public policy, you make public policy to, to address a problem. If a problem doesn't exist, like the homosexuality, it doesn't exist. It only exists in our minds. It doesn't exist. It's not a problem. Yeah, but, 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 so there's no need. There's but, no need to decriminalize it. There's no need to pass a law. To, there, there is absolutely no need for any legislation. On, but on uh, why would we wait until we have the problem and start wasting time again going to parliament to make a law? That's how public policy works. Because unless the, unless a problem exists, you can't find a solution. How about Muslim and Christians? We, 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 we don't have an issue in Gambia at the moment of being a Muslim or Christian in regards to the law. But it, it still now is a debatable subject. Yeah, it's a it's a debatable subject because it's it has been brought up by the constitution because when okay laws that are made uh, 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 a constitution is sort of like the basis the basis of every other law that the government would make it sets sort of it sets the floor for everything else that will come let's let's say uh, it is the foundation so to speak so okay. every other law that the government passes would be would be resting on the constitution and it has to align with the constitution so that's a separate matter but okay. when it comes to the issue of homosexuality trust me it is not a problem in gambia it has never been a problem until jamie <laughs> brought it up and <laughs> until now it is not a problem to be honest, it's, not, it's, not, it's not it's not an issue so there is no there is really no to be honest, i don't even think the eu are doing themselves or anything. anybody else any favors by pushing this line because it's not a problem that exists no. because no. The, the more they push it the, the more they push it they're just going to be agitating the public but exactly it's, it's not it's not a problem yeah okay True. thank you well right. uh, thank you very much listeners um thank you very much and i i apologize for keeping you for more than the two hours we i anticipated but um yeah it gets more interesting and when 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 Two brains like you and Lamy mixed together is very hard to stop. And and I think this was for the best interest of the Gambia. And also, um, we have all educated ourselves today. And those who are listening on the YouTube, thank you very much for watching. And, and we, we really value your time and your efforts. And we really value your contributions. And I hope everybody else um, has learned here from today. This was not about a debate for and and against APRC or, or the borough government. We, we are trying to analyze, we are trying to compare. And when doing comparison, it's best to bring the, the parties involved or the big players who would know better from their position and from their perspective. So we can we can better bring out real time um, problematic solutions. And, and, and then we also would wanna, um, um, that, was, that was the intention of the program. And, 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 and uh, you answer questions like, uh, um, also, so um, I'm not going to reply to many of these people, but uh, the best um, amongst you are the people who are listening attentively and who grab up what we are saying. We are not experts or we are not gurus, but as young people, we expect these healthy debates. D despite our differences, and coming together like this is what the Gambia needs. And I will, I will thank Lamin Tamba for coming. I will also thank Fasambu for coming. And, and also um, my technical person behind the scenes, Salan Yai. And Lamin, any last words, any, any word of appreciation? Thank you, because I know prior to this thing, some of your people were asking me if I could do an audio and send it, which I don't do, but I will try and do it and send you in, in bits, if also you want to share amongst your, your people, because some of them wanted to um, hear the, um, the story. Also, if you are not on YouTube, I'm sorry, Facebook, yeah. you can watch the program of, of, on, on YouTube. I'll try and make it on audio. Any, any, any word of thank you to people and then pa also? And we could have. Yeah, first and foremost, um, I'm grateful to Voice Out Digital. Uh, equally indebted to you, pa, pa Us. Uh, pa Sambu Jr. is not a stranger. He's always causing a nuisance somewhere. <laughs> but he's a lovely man. He's a very resourceful man. Uh, and we need people like him who doesn't who don't get angry when people push them to the hill uh, um he he debates all the way he's been chasing me since 2017 i guess <laughs> close to APRC now than at any time before um and for APRC people tuning in udp gdc ca ppp whatever party you support in the gambia this is a time for education forget yeah. what person said about the APRC. sometimes you need to compare things i said things about the borough government 
uh, Paus is trying to be neutral. Well, he's been neutral. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm thanking I'm thanking everyone involved, uh, YouTube, Facebook viewers, everyone. Your comments are appreciated. Let's do this for Gambia. Yeah. We are at a very difficult situation, and if we cannot unite as youth to change what's right for our country, there will never be unity. You understand? We have to look out for our Christian brothers. Importantly, we have to look after our women because our women are Christian and Muslim. They deserve equality for once going forward. They work extremely hard. This constitution, new constitution, has to reflect the equality. We're not rewarding women. I don't think they'll appreciate the reward. They just want to get what they deserve, and equality will be a start. So I don't want to make this a marathon speech, but thank you very much to all involved. We will come back again and we'll share experiences and knowledge and we'll take matters further. Thank you. Thank you, Lamin. Thank you very much. Pa? Yes, um, all I would say is, Pa, pa Oz, thank you very much for inviting me to, to your platform. And thanks to everybody um, that's working with you at Voice Out Digital. Uh, definitely, these are the sort, sorts of um, conversations that we should, be, we should be having. Because we may not always agree, because I'm sure um, we don't, all three of us don't agree on, on, on most things. But the, mm. the good thing is, um, once there's a healthy debate, yeah. then we can exchange ideas. Yeah. Then through that exchange of ideas, we can obviously um, bring other people on board. And, and it just creates um, a very enabling environment for healthy discussion to take place. And, and progress can always come from these, these discussions. Maybe not, not, not immediate, but over time. So yeah. definitely you are doing a very good job Paos, on this front. So all I would say is keep it up. And Lamin Tamba, thank you very much for um for um for, what um, you APRC? for yes, thank you very much for, <laughs> for, for for bringing up the um the APRC position on the matters that we have discussed here. Even though we don't agree, I absolutely yeah. respect respect your position. And he's a very lovely man. I I sometimes have um, discussions with him in in private sometimes. He's a very lo lovely man. Me and him always disagree, but we always do it in a very healthy, healthy, healthy way. So I think that's something that we should all all yeah. embrace. But thank you very much for what you're doing, Paus. Keep it up. Thank you, um, brothers. And then I really appreciate and admire you. And on my next program, I want to bring UDP. But I every time I make the approach, it's always a no. So I will keep trying, and 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 somebody asked me why don't you always have women on your platform? I I wish I could have a woman politician who would be bold enough to come and debate these issues. And we, I will keep searching. I want to I send invitations to UDP if if you are watching, and I want to have the UDP PR or, or somebody who can speak on behalf of UDP as a whole in the diaspora. And I want to bring PDOIS, and I want to bring CA. I have given to all these people. But I'm still managing to, to get answers. Um, but I value your time and I really apologize for the long program we have. Um, pa, uh, maybe Gamma don't know you, but what you are doing behind the scene um, also has to be has to be told. Um, I told my guys to you, I said, I'm bringing in Lamin Tamba and I've seen what he's doing. And I'm not sure if, if I could start a debate with Lamin and Pa because of knowing what they are doing. But that is, a, that is, that is hope for the future for the Gambia with these faces that we have seen online here. All we need to do is just to come out and show ourselves. But the, the, the future is bright for Gambia. We are only concerned about today, but um, looking at what could come from today for tomorrow, there is hope. So um, thank you very much, those who are watching. And thank you, those who made their comments. And those, unfortunately, those who answers questions we are not meant to be answered. Um, specific to Pa, <laughs> I will apologize <laughs> for in, in the middle. So, so thank you very much and see you next week again. Uh, thank you, guys.